and everyone in the audience is the yeah. first generation in American history to have it be worse off than your parents. So the social, and you agree with that, social contract, poor, more expensive. Yeah. So wouldn't it be rational for the American government to say, we're going to prioritize younger generation Americans that are American passport holders and citizens before those in another nation? I don't think, I don't, I don't want to say anything that offends people. But well, you, no, well, I've go already ahead. said it, right? I've already said yeah. it. Whatever. I think that the way we're going about it is wrong. And that if we don't have a clear path to citizenship, we won't open up those opportunities for people to come and seek a good life. But I also think but that, yeah, not, we are required to have those rights ourselves. Seeking as a good American life citizens. is fine. It's a nice added benefit. Our government does not exist to improve the life of foreign citizens. A but government, we should be open to the idea of accepting of, that. Of course we are, if we have our own yep. house in order. We are in chaos right now. We have the most depressed... What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are uh, feeling good. Today, guys, we're back with a new video. Today, we're going to check it out. Charlie Cook reasoning with a leftist is like talking to a war. I call him Charlie Kick because of kicking us. Let's get right to today's video. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I'm a political science student. I'm a second year here at K-State. Um, and I'm a first generation student. Try to turn it up a, turn little, it up a yeah. little bit. Yeah, perfect. Great. Thank you. And what's perfect. your name again? Um, Alondra nice to Alvarez. Meet you. Yeah. Um, so I just had a question because you talk a lot about like protecting and securing our southern borders. Um, but as the granddaughter of immigrants, I think that we get into a lot of complicated disputes with the idea that um, immigrants are criminals or drug dealers and things like that. So I just want to hear what your opinion is on those expectations or those, um, what do you call it, those stereotypes that are put on Hispanic communities, Latino communities, and how they change the way people perceive immigration. Sure. So... Um Thank you for the question. So you said you're the f your first generation yes, student or first generation American? I'm a first generation student. Cool, great. Second generation American? Did I hear that right? Um, or? third generation oh, cool. American on my mom's side. Uh, great. Second on my dad's. When your uh, your grandparents then is that right yes. came to this country? Did they do so through the the legal process that was in front um, of them? Um, so my father got married to my mother, so he's a legal resident of the United States. She's been here her entire life. But did she um, my, did she enter legally? My great. She did. She's okay. uh, she's born here. Yeah. Got it. Um, my grandpa on my dad's side entered in illegally. Okay. So um, I'm not here to like insult your grandpa, right? But I, yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 we must be very clear that the type of immigration that we support is when you follow our rules and you come on our terms, and that you do not break into a country uninvited and you try to cut. Can me. I add something to that? The reason why he left, and a lot of people in Mexico do, is because of the political state, especially in the 70s and 80s, when they decided to move. Um, they have a government that isn't supportive of their constituents, and because of drug problems, their, their only choice was to move. Yeah, I totally sympathize. That's not true. It's never the only choice to commit a crime, mm. and we should not put up with mm. it. And so it is a... It is an insult to other immigrants from Vietnam and Laos and Pakistan that have to wait decades in line to morally equivalent people that come in and just break in. Oh, I have an unstable country. Like half of the world's countries are unstable. Yeah, but that's why we have the Asylum Seekers Program. Which is heavily abused. And we're talking two different things. Asylum seekers and walking into the country illegally are similar but different things. Right. And so you can, so we have millions of gotaways of people that we have no idea who they are. They're not a, they're not declaring asylum. They just run across the border well, because they can't. The well, system doesn't allow other people to from Mexico specifically to assign themselves to who they are the last couple of years. So look, we just have to be very clear with this is that if you come into the country uninvited, you have committed a crime and you are a criminal. And we could decide that we're not going to enforce our laws. Or we can say that when you are a criminal, you should then be punished for that crime, a.k.a. sent back to your country of origin because you were not invited. And it is an insult, again, to the Poles and to the Czechoslovakians and from the Senegalese and people all across the world that don't have the proximity of the luxury just to waltz into America. You call it a luxury to leave a country that has political tyranny and come into a country with well, opportunity? Yes, to live in Mexico, to be able to go you know, 100 miles north and break into America. Do you know how many people in Pakistan would kill to be on that border? That's why we bring them in. Well, well we shouldn't, <laughs> right? That's the point. And secondly, do you, th do you think that you have a right to immigrate to America? 
I think that I didn't have a choice. My grandparents made that decision okay, for I mean, me. I'm not trying to attack your grandparents, but no one has a right to go to anybody else's country. You are invited. It is a privilege, not a right, to come into America. So it's a privilege to live a life that requires you to have clean water, clean food, clean yes, air. Yes, of course it is. And you have to fight for that? Yes, it is not. But a, we didn't? Hold on a sec. Well, Born here, hold, hold we didn't second. fight for that? Well, my ancestors did fight for that, actually. And I'm a very thankful recipient of many generations of Americans that fought for the greatest nation ever By to exist. By doing what? They, Coming here? Well, Illegally? What, 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 wait, what did my ancestors do? They came, came, here they came over here in 1620, fought in the Revolutionary War, fought in the Civil War, fought in World so War I. So because my grandpa didn't World come here in 1620, it gives him no right to well, have a good no, life? No, he can fill out paperwork and wait in line, like okay. the rest of the world. And then we can, see, sure. we can see whether or not it's in our best interest to allow him to come in. And so we have to weigh costs and benefits. I'm not saying we should have no immigrants, but immigration must be a net benefit for the American homeland and for the American citizen. We have brought in 10 million people in these last couple of years. We have now brought in 5% of the population of Haiti. Nobody is asking these questions. We're just saying, if you want to come in, you can come in. Do you see anything wrong with, I don't know, taking in 5% of the population of Haiti? Not necessarily, no. If we have the land and the resources to house them, it shouldn't be that big deal to bring in immigrants. Really? So you, I, so you, you, you for, do you think that the American government should first have a obligation to citizens before foreigners? Mm, okay, I think we have no, an answer obligation. The question. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah, we're obligated because we're citizens to have the rights that we have, but that doesn't mean we can't open up our uh, borders that's not and the we question. have the process Hold on a second. to do so. You being a younger American and everyone in the audience is the yeah. first generation in American history to have it be worse off than your parents. So the social, and you agree with that, social contract, poor, more expensive. Yeah. So wouldn't it be rational for the American government to say, we're going to prioritize younger generation Americans that are American passport holders and citizens before those in another nation? I don't think, I don't, I don't want to say anything that offends people. But you, you, no, wh I've go already ahead. said it, right? I've already said yeah. it. Whatever. I think that the way we're going about it is wrong. And that if we don't have a clear path to citizenship, we won't open up those opportunities for people to come and seek a good life. But I also think but that, yeah, not, we are required to have those rights ourselves. Seeking as a good American life citizens. is fine. It's a nice added benefit. Our government does not exist to improve the life of foreign mm. citizens. A but government we should be to, open to the idea of accepting of, that. Of course we are, if we have our own yep. house in order. We are in chaos right now. True. We have the most depressed, suicidal, anxious generation in history. Our birth rate is collapsing. Kids can't afford homes. Yeah. You guys are, are, are drowning in debt. You have to compete against you have to compete for jobs against foreigners. Our country is a mess right now. And so when your country is a mess and your home is in disarray and bedlam, your own government should say, time out. I have a heart for the people of Haiti. I have a heart for the people of every country. But you're not coming here until this generation at least has it as good as their parents. But it's the stereotype that I'm given as a Mexican-American to I, I, fulfill those standards that people have I, on immigration I, I as well. I don't share that. I haven't said that here today. There's people from all over the world that enter the southern border now. There's 118 countries that come across the southern border. But I don't care if you enter illegally from Bulgaria or from Laos or from Mexico or from Nicaragua. Someone who does not have their paperwork when they come in is by definition breaking federal law. Yeah, and but so then what should we do with someone who breaks with federal law? But does that mean that people, including their children, their grandchildren, including myself, well, have you, to live with the stereotype or the standard set upon me that I am a criminal, I, I am a drug dealer, I am a X, Y, Z? Okay, so I have I played into that stereotype? I've heard it many, many times, not from you specifically today. Okay, but then it's a little bit of a red herring, right? Because we're not even talking about it. I'm not... Well, my so, original question was, what do you think about it? What do I think about stereotypes? About the stereotype given to immigrants well, right I, now and children of immigrants and people of color here. Well, I, I, I can't talk about something I don't believe in. So, I mean, I don't want people to be stereotyped. No different than when you look at a young white man on campus, you think he's a rapist, right? Which is... Uh, I don't. Well, that's good. No, but that, that is a stereotype that is pushed sometimes. Like, oh, if you see a young man on campus, it's campus rape culture. Stereotyping is wrong. It should not occur. But we also must understand that the way that we constitute our immigration policy right now in this country is not in the benefit of the American per citizen. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're ac ac acting much more like a colony than a country. And where a country is where you have ties that bi bind you together, you have a shared history, hopefully a shared language, you have a shared culture, 
where a colony should come from anywhere across the world and so be it. Yeah, but isn't that like the point of America? Ah, Diversity that, and so, inclusion and oh, belonging. Where that's so, uh, that, I'm so glad you brought that up. Where is that in the Constitution or the Declaration that diversity and inclusion, these are false ideals that are taught in school. They're, I guess, nice, but is diversity and inclusion really an American ideal? I think so. Where does it say that? I think that everyone has the right to live out their own individuality, their own lives, and no, no, their I, own I, way. I know, but, but you say the American ideal. Where do you get that from? Yeah, pursuit of happiness for Americans. You're right, because that's what the Declaration I'm an was American. written for. No, that's fine. Does that mean I'm not valid here for no, having no, a diverse background? No, of course you are, but I'm saying yeah. that... What, so can no, I not no, no, express no, that? No, don't, don't change the topic. You <laughs> said we should be able to open up the country for people from all across the world. Yeah. Why do we believe that is a core belief? Because we want to help people. That's the point. We, we, we came here a Got long, it. long time ago. We established a country a long, long time ago, and we well, want to have other people come in, I think, to live in the luxury that we live it. in now. L last question. I knew you Are were... you okay with deporting every illegal person that's here? No. Why? Because there's some people here that are not represented well by the media. There's a lot of illegal immigrants here that are working their butts off for the life that no, they no, want. I, I don't care if they're working hard. But the point <laughs> is, what should the punishment be for breaking into a country? Depends on the crime you commit after no, no. you break into it. Okay. No, ju no, th that's it. The, uh, I... I'm, not, I'm talking about just the crime is breaking in. What should the punishment be? I break into somebody's home. What should their punishment be? Do you, can you repeat that? Oh, so if you behave after you get here, that's fine. So to play that out, if someone comes into your dorm room uninvited and they do the dishes and laundry, they can stay? If I'm not going to do my own dishes, heck yeah. They're doing my dishes for me. Cool. If they don't kill me, I'm not dead. It is what it is, man. Well, they, they are killing a lot of Americans, but... You say they. Like, they are? Yes, like, they. Like, all illegal immigrants kill M people? M That's crazy. Many illegals do. Actually, the crime rate for illegals is far above that of native-born Americans. And even if it wasn't, okay. even if it wasn't, it would not be there. No, but it's just interesting. The punishment for the crime of breaking into a nation should be what it is in Switzerland and Israel and Hungary... Every person who breaks into a nation uninvited goes back to their country of origin, period. So why is there an emphasis on the southern border? Because most people come illegally through the southern border. Ten million people have come across the southern border. And by the way, do you have any concern for the 320,000 missing kids that have also been sex trafficked across the southern border? Of course by, I do. But who's doing the sex trafficking? A handful of people, not no, no, everybody no. else. 320,000, that's a lot. The children. Yeah, but each one of them has a handler. I'm just... So, and that means that 320,000 sex pimps are bringing in the, sex slaves to this country. The point I'm trying to make is that we categorize all illegal immigrants under the same thing. Sex traffickers, no, drug not, dealers. Am I and doing And by that? you saying all illegal immigrants no, 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 have no. to be deported, yes. you're implying that all of I'm them are anything. doing these I'm terrible things. I'm super And clear. not a small percentage of them. Not, well, it's not small, actually. 320,000 out of 10 million is not small, actually. That's a serious number. That's 3.2% of all people that came into the country are connected to sex slavery in some way. That's insane, actually. 3.2% are connected to sex slavery. That's like a lot. But anyway, so let's just kind of, I want to just make clear, if, if you come into a country uninvited, definitionally you are a criminal. We're just not going to agree. It's fine. Then That's final okay. question. What is a criminal? What is a criminal? No, no. What, what is it? Would you agree with the definition that a criminal is someone who breaks the law? Mm. Here's why I'm thinking. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't... I know how he's going to turn it, and I don't fully understand. It's not a matter of turning it. It's a, it's a very A, B, C sequence. <clears throat> if they're not criminals, then tell me what a criminal is. And a criminal is obviously someone who breaks the law. Someone who comes across the southern border broke federal law. Therefore, they are a criminal. Okay, then we can just disagree. But you have to tell me what a criminal is, though. Trump! Oh, Trump. Yeah. Yo! You got to come up to the mic. Okay. <laughs> She's right behind me. Yeah. Have fun. Can't tell me what a criminal is. Yeah. It's so sad. It's because they, if you want to really get down to it, 
at the core, and I, she's a very sweet person who was there, the, the, the left cannot define core terms. Criminal, woman, racist, democracy. Okay. This is amazing. Like, this entire video is kind of like, uh, the, the ladies just don't accept the truth. The criminal is the one who went up. Um, the criminal is the one who breaks the law. And if you enter into a country illegally, you are thereby a criminal. You understand? It's as simple as that. It's, it's as simple as I said it. The thing is that I don't know why they see America as different. If you go to Switzerland, if you go to UK, if you go to Canada, if you go to Germany, if you go to Japan, if you enter a country illegally, you are mandated to be deported back to your country. It is, it's how it is even in Africa. In Ghana, in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Congo, like anywhere you could mention. Senegal, like if you enter into a country illegally without your papers, you will be deported back to your country. Why would America be different? Why do people expect or feel like they have the rights to be in America? Because it's a free land. They have entered, so they have the right to be there. They have the right to have the privilege to everything in America. It's crazy. Because someone just use it as your own house, your own home, for instance. Someone broke into your home without you knowing broke into your home, entered and said that you have the right to live here. It makes no sense. You will want to chase the person back to where it's coming from. That's how it is for illegal immigrants to invade a country. You have committed a crime. That's why we have working permits. People who come to America to work, then they go back again. They have this... Um, so you you come into someone's country because your country... Um, it's not good enough or you don't have greener pasture in your country and you need a greener pasture in a different place. It's not a bad thing. But coming to that country, you are looking for greener pasture illegally without the federal, without the states, without the government being aware of who you are or having any record about you or giving permission to enter in the first place. You have committed a crime. It's bad. Like it's very, very terrible. And America has the right to deport you back to your country. You should not feel entitled. And I say that entitlement, that's what gets Americans surprised. Why are illegal immigrants feeling entitled to be in America? That is a right. It's not your right to be in another man's country. Having more illegal people coming is a button, or more immigrants coming is a button. But the more illegal people is coming to America, it's crazy to a lot of chaos, guys. Like the raping, crimes rates increase and you won't have record of who commits the crime. Illegal vote, like voting. People who are not over a citizen of the country start voting. Like a lot of things will start happening in America without America having a record of who the people are. It's, it's, it's very, very bad. It's, such things break the system of a country. And America don't want to accept or permit such to to happen or to continue happening. Because right now, this generation we are in right now, this current generation in America, I find it hard to find a job, find it hard to own a home. Why is because of the massive immigrants coming in? Because they want to treat everyone equally. By you treating everyone equally, equally reduces wages. It's as simple as that. More workers are coming in the wages drops. The, the men Americans who ought to grow themselves more will be limited because more immigrants are coming in and also fighting for the same job that a normal American is fighting for. They want everybody wants to have a good heart of bringing people who are in different countries passing through different type of um, suffering and hardship Literally everywhere in the world, people are suffering. People are poor. People are passing through different kind of hardship. In Africa, you see, people are passing through poverty, serious one. 
So you, that doesn't mean you bring everyone in Africa or in different countries in Africa and tell them, come over to America because there's good pasture right here. If people are trooping in like that, Americans can't handle it. The numbers are popping in in America. They can't handle it. It will break the system. So they have to have a regulation that regulates people who comes in and goes out. That's why they have, they want it to be legal. So they can be able to tell or know who, okay, in a year, like six to 10 million people can come in into America or even less than that. Or one million can come into America in a year. Americans will be able to know the number of people who come into the country every year. But if illegal immigrants are coming in, they won't be able to tell how many people are in America already. The census will be kind of like destroyed. They can't, they can't get a specific numbers of people who are currently in America. They can't tell the numbers. You understand? So this is, is a very serious issue that ought to be regulated. And the student right there, she's she's just denying the facts. I know there's something called stereotype of um, Hispanic people who come to America and start their life. They feel like they, they do drugs. I love how Charlie dismantled her, gave her his piece of his mind, and tell her how, how it ought to be. This is how the system works. It's not because of... It's not what you want that the system follows. It's what benefits the entire population the system follows. So this was an amazing video to watch. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to us. Subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe.